than everybody else. And you're live. And that's how you do it. That's how you do it, folks. Wow. It's Tuesday night. Yeah, don't be... do it like I did Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> don't get my week. Uh, <laughs> folks, it's Tuesday night, or it's not Tuesday night. It's Thursday. It's Thursday. Thursday. Uh, God, uh, the DM, yeah, God, I mean, Jesus Christ. For, for, <laughs> for what David did on Tuesday, we will never, ever. Uh, I was about to say, that, that was comedy gold. <laughs> That's right. Folks, it's Thursday night. You know what that means. It's cacophony. We're going urban, urban legends. Follow us on Twitch. Follow us on Twitter. Take a look at our YouTube archive. If you want to buy our cool crap, it's there. If you want to join us in Discord, it's there. Uh, if you want a seat on the show, Saturday's a one shot. Uh, let us know, M Hobo <laughs> Inc. at Twitter or Gmail, or catch us in Discord, or uh, respond to one of these guys' Twitter. Uh, first and foremost, uh, let's give homage to our sponsors. First off, Pirate Dog Dice for the really cool dice that maybe you can win or own. Uh, our Gen Con players are getting some uh, cool ones. They were a little bit... Uh, pre-finesse, but they are pretty nice. Uh, speaking of Gen Con, both of our shows are sold out. We're sorry. Hopefully we'll be streaming them live so that you can watch the entertainment. Our other sponsor is oddfishgames.com. Uh, they, and along with their sub-partner, Adventure Sense, uh, will be hosting two games of their uh, How to Help Your Cat, uh, How to RPG with Your Cat. Uh, and they are trying to get a third show in because all 40 seats sold out. So if they get that other show in, it's I think they shop for Saturday. So you Gen Con Live people, uh, take a look at that. Uh, that being said, let's uh, go ahead and introduce you to our cast who will be roaming the streets of Cataway tonight. First off, our youngest and perhaps most deadly hobo, Caitlin. Caitlin, who are you and who are you playing? Why am I the most deadly? <laughs> Ask Kyle. Your first episode within 30 seconds? Never mind. <laughs> Come on, please, guys. Yeah. I like to kill people, whether it's real life or on the air. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Daphne, who's feeling some Elvira vibes tonight. We're gothic Daphne because we're on our ghost <laughs> What? We aren't doing ghosts again. We did that last time. Ash. All right. Well, one of the ghosts from last time possessed you. me. <laughs> oh, Bill. oh, God. <laughs> so now wow. I'm Gothic Daphne. I'm playing a Tiefling Paladin again. Same as last time. We'll see how it goes. Cheapers. It'll go great. Mm -hmm. uh, next up is David. David, who are you? Who are you playing? I am playing Zadar, uh, a regular on Cacophony. Uh, he is an arcane trickster, and uh, yeah, gender roles don't hold him back. Non-binary. Or her. Non-binary. So, depending care. on how Zadar feels, that's what he is. He, or she, she, it will try and pick she, up anything. Day. Depends I, on you know, want to sit I, down to pee that day. That's right. I miss yeah, that. Depends. I miss yeah. that NPC. I can yeah. I can change like that. So if there's a line at the at the women's room, oh it's just like, God. hey, going into That's men's. Amazing. <laughs> oh. Or you just use nature's bathroom. Trees, gender trees, nature. trees That's, are everybody's friend. Too. Last but certainly not least, uh, normally our producer, our producer tonight, and owner creator of Pirate Dog Dice, Carrie. Carrie, who are you, and who are you playing? <laughs> Uh, I'm married to the asshole at DMs, and <laughs> oh man, <laughs> yeah, I am always on the blunt of his seduction. Um, I do pirate dog dice, and tonight I am playing a wizard necromancer. Seduction's my go-to plan. Jeez. Plan D, maybe. Uh, folks, if you uh, <laughs> if you saw the precursor to the show, you saw the uh, cool advertisement by OddfishGames.com check them out uh you also saw that we are for mature audiences only i assume that one went out yes yeah uh that should just be tattooed to my fucking forehead uh and uh if you saw the intro these guys are in cacophony 
per usual, and they are going <laughs> to see my favorite guild master, the Adventurer's Guild Master, Famunda These Nuts. Uh, and they are currently sitting in his office discussing uh, the councilman problem, Arawa, who was poisoned several episodes back and still has not regained consciousness. Uh, Famunda says he has possibly found an answer, but you guys are not going to like it. About that time, there's a loud cacophony outside the door with some noise. The door bursts open, and there, for the first time for Daphne, is the infamous Mortimer J. Sneed, a professor from the Grand Academy, currently on sabbatical here in Cacophony. He pushes his way past uh, the faithful steward, Fauntleroy, and says, they are expecting me. Ugh. Looks at you three and goes, are you ready to go on another adventure, my friends? You'll notice this time uh, he has a little bit of different nomenclature uh, there, uh, Camille. Uh, finally, he has purchased a steel hat because Camille has the tendency to whack him in the head with the <laughs> staff. Uh, so Mortimer J. Sneed has a nice, shiny little skull cap. He doesn't have a there. steel cup, though, does he? He does not have a steel cup, so awesome. that is still eligible. And that's in play. <laughs> that's right. His former love was a cave woman, uh, probably 500 years ago, so that doesn't really matter. Uh, hello, hello, Mortimer exclaims jubilantly and throws down a pair of books and several scrolls onto the desk of the guildmaster, knocking over some of the knickknacks and, of course, these nuts, Earl Grey. T. One Camille, two Zidar, three Daphne, or four Famunda. Better not get it on my leather cat suit. <laughs> Camille is doused in Earl Grey tea oh. uh, as he spreads open the tomes and knocks over the cup. Uh, Famunda rolls his eyes. Camille probably grips her quarterstaff tightly. Uh, but he begins to explain what he believes has occurred to Councilman Arawa. Uh, he goes into a lengthy litany, which Daphne, you are not used to him. Uh, he will, he will bore the shit out of you. Uh, he begins to give a recitation on his theory. He believes that Arawa is the victim of a herbaceous concoction from Gladiolus Jester. Gladiolus. Is that a Jester. person or a plant? Could be both. <sighs> they identify it as a plant. <laughs> it is a plant. It is commonly known as a sword lily. Hmm. Gotcha. Don't sigh at me, Mortimer. I will whack you in that head. <laughs> he will open up another book that has a sketch of said flower, and as he smacks the page, you notice that. Someone has put said flower in between it to dry it out, but <laughs> pollen goes everywhere. I'm going to need a constitution. Oh, damn it. Ah, damn it, Mortimer. Make the plant fern go away. Nobody wants that. <laughs> constitution saving throw. Nice. Emil, constitution. <laughs> Zadar, oh, Constitution? Wait. Ten. Ha, <laughs> fail. Can't read Daphne! Get in there, sorry. Meh. Whoa. Twelve? Seventeen. Eleven. Oh, no, our Constitution right now or our roll? Uh, your roll. Okay, yeah, my roll seventeen. Okay. Daphne <laughs> is unaffected. Uh, Zadar, Camille, uh... <laughs> Damn it, Mortimer. Uh, also, Flamunda D's Nuts is also choking uh, and is not the least bit thrilled at this mess. Uh, my apologies, my friends. For I, Mortimer J. Sneed, instructor at the Grand Academy, currently on sabbatical here in Cacophony. Had no idea. <coughs> that Did he play up the cigarettes? 
Nice. Oh, uh, so is that pollen going to do anything to us? No, the pollen is actually helpful. However, we are going to need to get more pollen in order to make a concoction that will presumably heal the councilman. How do you there know this? Making plant babies over here? The tomes uh, clearly dictate the fact that his symptoms are completely registered right here in this tome, as you can see right here. <laughs> As the pollen goes up, uh, Zadar, Camille, uh, Famunda, <coughs> damn it. My apology. I will stop smacking this. But as you can see, the symptomatic listing here is the same as Arawa. So uh, if you go. How many other things have the same symptom listing? I do not know. Well, obviously but... you haven't researched that thoroughly then. I am unconcerned with other things. Oh, awesome. For three days, Arawa has been in a coma. As you can see, causes extended comatose. Co so here, here is the problem. I will cut to the chase because I, Mortimer J. Sneed, knows time is valuable. The problem is the sword lily uh, only blooms in spring. And as we know... We are neck deep in summer here. So what I propose, which oh, no. I am going to need some help with, uh, I will use my magical wire with your assistance to go back three months to collect this plant, which blooms on uh, the rock face here in Cacophony. So it shouldn't be any problem. Three months, grab a bushel, and come back. That is my proposal. Thank you. I am Mortimer J. Sneed of the Grand Academy, currently on sabbatical here in Cacophony. Are there any questions? Mm -hmm. Yes, Camille. And he... <laughs> <laughs> Cowers. Is there a newspaper in Cacophony? <laughs> Nothing? No type of... Anything that tracks what happens from day to day? Hustler magazine, but that's a monthly publication. Because <laughs> yeah. everybody's hustling in cacophony. Uh -huh. No, there is there is no uh, Ben Franklin's almanac, any of that shit. So there's no record keeper. Aside from Mortimer J. Sneed. These but are not his books. Actually, Camille and Zadar, you will recognize these books as those that got knocked out of a certain messenger's hand. It seems as though Mortimer J. Sneed, instructor from the Grand Academy, has put himself on this case. <laughs> so, again, there's not anybody that keeps notes around here of anything. <laughs> You could it's it, all you, you could inquire at the Wizard's Tower and see if Uma Thurman has oh, any information. Jesus. I don't think Th she's talking to us right now. <laughs> uh, Daphne, you missed it. Uh, Uma Thurman is quite mad at these two. As well but as Carol, I, because Carol used her face to knock a gargoyle off her tower. But right. I, can we just say I joined the venture later, so maybe they're not mad at me? You are not mad at... She would not be mad at you. So maybe we should send Daphne to go talk to her. Yeah. Sure. sure. You can send Daphne to go talk but to her. But then again, I mean, she might not even know it's me either. So That's true. <laughs> true. Maybe the two of you should go and Mortimer and I can wait downstairs. <laughs> I okay. just want to know if anybody knows of anything that happened three months ago that we might walk into if we put our... Oh, no, no, there. no. That's, that's recent history. No, yeah, it was a mild spring. Okay. Famunda will be able to tell you that. No, it it, uh, it was just right before uh, you guys arrived in town and uh, put in your first request to so become uh, no members riots, of the No riots, no plagues, no nothing. No, oh, this spring was absolutely beautiful. As I recall, the flowers were blooming. Mortimer J. Steed will say, I was not present three months ago, so I do not know. The important thing is, if we travel, I was at the Grand Academy 
before I took my sabbatical here in Cacophony. Uh, the important thing is uh, three months and none of us were here. Uh, that is the best course because if we were here, it could cause a tremendous problem. A if rift. We're in, a rift in the time, time, time space continuum. So with none of us here three months ago, we should be fine. I'll leave it up to my partners to decide. I am biased in this endeavor. <laughs> well, I, I have my reservations too, but I mean, uh, what choice do we have? You can let him go by himself. That yeah. certainly will not it, cause will any not. problems whatsoever. Whatsoever. I'd wake up tomorrow and be in the Stone Age. <laughs> Amanda coughs violently yet again and says, I will put up the money for the job. 250 each one of you put up by the guild go with this guy and uh i'd kind of like to see how you guys do this um so i'll just tag along oh well Wait, who's coughing i think that guy needs some like honey to like soothe that throat well he can always uh lick camille's uh clothing because the earl gray tea's all over it you can suck my robe <laughs> That's right. Uh, Camille and Zadar also are. <laughs> oh my god, oh my god. John Jet with a hacking cough. Ah. So, Daphne, you and Mortimer are the only ones that uh, were not affected by the pollen. So, uh, Famunda's ready. Uh, he tells Fauntleroy where he's going. Uh, Fauntleroy. Uh, yeah, yes, sir, I so will passed. go ahead and clean up. <laughs> we're going back to the future, Marty. Uh, and he asks Fauntleroy, Fauntleroy, uh, do you recall anything of unusual nature three months ago? Uh, the young steward thinks for a moment. He said, uh, no, this is a beautiful spring. Nothing bad happened. Okay. Until we came along. So, so do you want to go down to the dock? Sure. sure. We got to go to the Rock of Ages again. Got to go to the Rock of Ages. Daphne, uh, these guys will instruct you on the way down. There is a singular triangular stone set in the cobblestones of the dock. This is called the Rock of Ages, and it requires a special wire uh, that Mortimer J. Sneed is in possession of, along with a special amulet that he wears around his neck. Uh, time travel is a bit of a jolt. And as you guys get to the dock, uh, you mill about until everybody sends to leave you alone. Uh, from under these nuts, <coughs> watches uh, and uh, Mortimer unwinds the magic wire. He needs it in a triangle. Uh, he directs each one of you to hold a piece of it, uh, move into the position, uh, he looks at Fomunda and goes, oh. move, 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 move back a little bit more. Gets you out of that range. Uh, lest he be sucked in through the time portal. And he goes, okay, is everybody ready to go back three months in time? He's supposed spring? to go with us? Or he just wants to watch us? How it he happens? just wants to see how it happens. Oh, okay. Okay. So he says, good luck, my friends. I will be waiting right here for you upon your successful return. Woohoo. There you are. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Mortimer whips out his old necklace, holds onto the wire, and he goes, everybody ready? Camille, yes. Zidar, Fomunda, D12 against me. Oh, Lord. <laughs> Don't have to? Nope, you are unaffected by the pollen. Ten. Four. Eleven. Uh, just, just as Mortimer leans down, both Camille, Zidar, but not Fomunda, cough violently, moving the wire, and the last thing you hear is, oh shit, as the blinding light erupts, and you all feel stone underneath your back. God uh. damn it. Uh, that was not his fault, that was you guys. <laughs> <laughs> No, no, it was his fault with his fucking pollen. <laughs> you, you look up to see a cloudless sky. It is a beautiful day. The weather is perfect. 
Uh, <laughs> Do we think it's spring? You could definitely tell that there's a chill in the air, and you think it is spring. Uh, that is the good news. Mm -hmm. uh, the bad news is the stone does not feel like cobblestone underneath your backs. And as you all sit up, you realize you are sitting on the dock area of Cacophony, but it's not built yet. God damn it. What's worse is you hear a scream of horror from Mortimer J. Sneed. Mm, darn. Where is Mortimer, he? what's <laughs> Mortimer is behind a what large boulder that is in between all of you, and as you turn to look at him, he is holding both ends of the magic wire. It has been severed. <laughs> <laughs> he is in a panic right now. Uh, each of you feels hot breath on your shoulder. Ew, why? I'm Why sure, you ask? Really? <laughs> Slowly I turn. <laughs> step by step. As you look over, Billy goats oh. are hovering over you. And from they above, what? They're licking their lips, looking over us? They're chewing the grass on ah! the not yet docks. <laughs> and all of you here, what in the hell? is going on um you look <laughs> over and there is a i'll call her a woodsman she's wearing buckskin uh pants uh a leather vest long golden hair that is you know in the swiss miss uh braids nice and she's just looking at you surrounded by a bunch of other goats who are you well <laughs> oh god you guys are fucked unless he gets that fixed Zadari, can you calm him down i can put him out <laughs> is only what you make it to be for what you think is real so if you don't think it's real it may not be reality so you can just imagine yourself somewhere else is what i'm telling him philosophy there you go. <laughs> We're trapped. We're doomed. Uh, who wants to talk to the lady in buckskin breeches? Well, uh, who has the most charisma? Oh, um, oh. I got 14 in charisma. Uh, Zadar's got 18. Mm, I guess Zadar, it better be you then. <laughs> Zadar, what? what? form are you currently in? Uh, i'm in the female joan jet form so nice we do love joan jet so, joan jet if you ever want to be on the show you'll get just, top just let us know <laughs> uh what do you want to say to swiss miss girl uh I because say, she is clearly mystified that you four fuckers just appeared <laughs> um uh, i just tell her um uh, it's all right. We're here. We're from another time. <laughs> As you can tell. <laughs> but, um, yeah, we mean you no harm. Uh, did you see us suddenly appear here? Uh, yeah, there was a big okay. bright light that scared my ghost. There you go. That's what I wanted to hear. Yes, we're from the bright light. So, so you're dead? No. No, not that bright light, but... Okay. We're blind. What are so, you doing here? Uh, as a matter of fact, we're on a mission. You know? From God? No. Wrong show. <laughs> we are looking for a flower, actually. A particular type of flower that grows on stone faces around here. Uh, the sword lily? Yes. As a matter of fact, yes. We are looking for that. You're a few days too late. Oh no. Does it only bloom at a particular time or Did your besides spring? It? No, we harvested it to for the tribute to the Omarans. Do you have any left? We have all of it left. The Omarans aren't due till today or tomorrow. Could we have a small bit of it? Uh, I, I, 
I am afraid I I am but a poor goat herder. Uh, I do not do that. You need to deal with the Lord in the tower. <clears throat> and I look as, over. <laughs> as, she, as she points out, points up, you can all tell okay, this is the dock area, and there's That's the Uma's. canyon, and up there, and you can just barely make out the top of the tower over the plateau, and it would appear to be in the exact same location as the Tower of Uma Thurman. Uh, the goat herder says, you would have to talk to the lord in the tower. Uh, I what cannot is, give that to you. What is the lord's name? I hit the Lord's name is Alfred Tennyson. Oh. Alfred Tennyson. Okay. Okay. Lovely so, name. Oh. Um, can we calm Mortimer down? And <laughs> uh, Mortimer. I Mortimer and I smack him in the face. Uh, he is pretty distraught. I mean, he is, he is just, he is just holding those two pieces of wire and he is just crestfallen. Uh, right. I smack him in the face. Hold us. Uh, hold on for just a moment. Let me take care of my friend over here. So, <laughs> and I'm like Mortimer, calm down. What do you need to fix this? I I I need a jeweler or a, a, a metalsmith. I I don't know if it can be fixed. Well, we did do a little better. We're not in a Paleolithic error or whatever it was like we were last time. You are not. And unfortunately, your lover isn't here. <laughs> As you look over uh, your journeys through Old Town, mm -hmm. Old Town's a little bit bigger than you remember it to be. But it is in the same location. But there are no stone walls surrounding the city, so you are clearly a couple hundred years in the past. Okay. But you are not in a Neolithic society. Uh, you are in a medieval, uh, yeah, early medieval, probably. It's dirty, it smells like the color brown around here, it's no, just great. stinky. Uh, but uh, the town's right over there, it looks like. <laughs> and you also have the goat herders standing there watching you, okay. And return to the goat herder, and it's just like, let me introduce myself, I am Sadar. Uh, perhaps you have crafts craftsmen in that town that's nearby? You mean Cacophony? Cacophony, yes. Yes. Uh, uh, we have a smith. She is, she is very good. She's very good? Um, she repairs my stuff all the time. I am Goldie. Goldie, pleasure to meet you. Nice to meet you, Zidar. And your associates? Uh, my associates, this is Camille, and this is Daphne, and the hysterical one over there is Mortimer. <laughs> We're gonna die. <laughs> oh man! Well, I can take you to the Smith if we it'll would shut him up. It will shut him up. So, if we could, please. Unless you have a ball gag. Do you guys have uh, I have it back at home. Uh, <laughs> one moment, real quick. We'll talk later then. <laughs> she gives a big whistle, uh, and a collie comes leaping around the boulders. Goldie and the dog immediately jets off and starts to encircle the goats to bring them into a tight herd. Wow, that is amazing. Does this? She goes, okay. The dog will go ahead and take care of the goats. Follow me. Uh, okay. There is a, a rather thick hedgerow where mm -hmm. you think the wall of cacophony would be. You aren't sure. Uh, she leads you through a safe spot on it. Uh, and there is a sprawling community here. There's maybe uh, 30 or so buildings. Uh -oh, smoke rising from the fires. Uh things of that nature. As you enter the area, everybody's like, what the hell is that? Uh, she goes, 
you don't mind if I stop by my house real quick, do you, please? Mm-hmm. That's no. Fine. no. <laughs> She's about fine. late teenage years, by the way. Oh. Uh, uh, Goldie stops by a small building for a moment and retrieves a large axe from her porch. Uh, she looks at each of you and goes, well, you got weapons. So uh, opens up the door, yells, Ma! I'll be back in a minute. <laughs> Shuts the door. She turns around, gives a great big sigh, and thunk, a three-pointed metallic object embeds itself in the shaft of her axe. Uh, she yells, damn it, Yoni! Uh, and if you follow her gaze... Yeah, I, I do, <laughs> very quickly. <laughs> you can see a very short, half lean male laughing hysterically. She pries out the triangular-shaped metal and wings it back at him, and with a heavily leathered glove, catches it. <laughs> Puts it back into his belt. He goes, I don't know what you were worried about. I had it the whole way. Uh, the two uh, become engaged in a very loud and brutal argument about his carelessness. Uh, as the numerous citizens of Cacophony walk by, each goes about their business, but each does this as they look at you because your clothing is completely out of place. All right. Uh, I start banging my quarter staff on the ground. Okay. Uh, you get the attention of Yoni and Goldie. Uh, Yoni wants to know what's going on. Uh, Mortimer again. <laughs> Can you what? Pacifier. He's like, Again. Yeah. That's why one? we asked her, wait, we're at her place. She has the ball gag, right? Yeah, but she's going to have to get it in front of her mom. She doesn't oh. feel good about that. Okay. Well, we'll talk later. Yeah, some things you don't do in front of your mom. Oh, I know. <laughs> Goldie says... Depends on your kings. No yeah, kings. That, that's true. Uh, <laughs> Brazzers, if you want to be one of our sponsors, go ahead and let us know. Hey. Um, <laughs> she She tells the group, Real quick, hang on. And goes through a very quick rundown to Yoni, the halfling, but points out that he needs to go mind his own business. He, (laughs) this is my business now. I am going to follow you whether you like it or not. Mortimer again gives a loud wail, and you can tell that it is causing her some anguish. Uh, And she says, let's go over to the smithy. Uh, You guys head over to the smithy and a very buxom woman wearing only a leather apron and a skirt comes out. Uh, Goldie introduces you to Chesty McSwoon and she halves her it's it's chick night. Swoon it is. (laughs) Halves her smith's hammer over her shoulder uh, getting a little uh, ember dust on her broad shoulders and says, what do you got? Mortimer. Zip. Zip. Wow. <laughs> is focused. Is <laughs> Laser pig. focused. What a pig. So, so, so Zadar. <laughs> She's like, hi. <laughs> so, uh, yes, Chesty McSween or McSwoon has a 16 charisma. Uh, and it's not her personality. Uh, so <laughs> she looks at Goldie and goes, what do you want, young one? And looks at you guys and does this. I wink back. Uh, okay. <laughs> I like my lip. Not into chicks, I'm afraid. Not tonight. Uh, uh, wants to know. It's not a complete ladies' night. What can I say? Yeah. Dice giveth, dice taketh away. Certainly um, did. <laughs> so uh, she's waiting for an explanation on what you guys want. Okay. Mortimer, um, tell her what we need. What is the structural integrity of your leather apron like? Smack <laughs> him on the back of the head, that chrome dome. Uh, his spectacles kind of tilt over. 
I'm sorry. Uh, I am in need of your services to... Um, I take my quarterstaff and whack him in the nuts. <gasps> Ooh, see if you hit him. Mm. Oh, fuck. Uh, four. Make it count. Four? Four. <laughs> Not even <laughs> close. Uh, like you tap it at least. <laughs> Not with a four. <laughs> he didn't even get halfway there. And he's unarmed. Armored. Nothing. Uh, he snaps out and he goes, can you fix this? I need it to be put back together. It needs to be as one. Chesty McSwoon takes the two ends. <laughs> Mortimer's probably just Creaming Jeez himself. Him. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Bring me my white pants. <laughs> uh, I believe I can. I do not know if I can restore its magical properties, though. <laughs> uh, clearly, Goldie has had enough and mm -hmm. taps six. Daphne on the shoulder. Uh, did you want to go up to the tower now? Daphne. 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 <laughs> Goldie taps you on the shoulder and asks if you are ready to go to the tower while Mortimer is blah, blah, blah. Sure. Let's go to the tower. Uh, as you guys <laughs> walk through the bustling town, we'll say. Okay. Of it's Kagafa. not a shanty town right now. Huh? It's not a shanty town. It's like an old west boom town kind of nice. appearance. Uh, the people are mostly wearing furs uh, because they don't believe that spring is actually here. Uh, they still have knee pain and things of that nature. Uh, Yanni continues to pepper Goldie with a shitload of questions about who are these guys? Why are they dressed this way? What's up with them? Blah, 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 blah. When a shriek is heard, everybody roll initiative. Oh. Initiative. Wow. Six. Three. Uh, nine. Really? A fucking ten beat you guys. Why are we all on, like, the multiples of three? Because <sighs> Zadar likes... Odd numbers. <laughs> nice save. Uh, you, all three of you, uh, observe an extremely large pig, massive pig, big meaty tusks me. <laughs> hanging off the side. Two men are grappling with the rope that holds it, but they are clearly not strong enough. And the giant boar breaks loose and heads for. Mortimer J. Sneed behind you. Oh. It is going to it is going to rampage. Uh, fortunately, Chesty McSwoon beat us all on initiative. And she nat 20s out, fucker. Oh. Wow. <laughs> it only does two hit points of damage to it. Uh, it is enough to knock it off its gate. Uh and now it is uh, my turn. So I will attack Mortimer with a three. So I will miss Mortimer as Chesty McSwoon grabs him by the front of the tunic and protects him. Uh, let's go with the nine. Zadar, you're up. Okay. Well, it's just like I pull my scimitars and it's just like, uh, how do you feel about pork chops? <laughs> and... I'm a vegan. Bring on the bacon. But these <laughs> folks aren't, so... Yeah. Right. Go for it, Zadar. Okay, so Zadar is going to make his first attack. So, uh, I'm using the, the crowd as cover, right? No. Oh. Uh, <laughs> crowd is scattering. Okay. They don't okay. want to be Mortimer Mincemeat. Okay, so I won't get the sneak attack. Bonus. You will not get the sneak attack yet. Damn it. Okay. AC 12 to hit the big boar. 19. That hits. All right. 
A big boar from that strike is going to take a, a whopping uh, 10 damage. And with his offhand with the dagger, Zadar is going to make another attack as his bonus action. Uh, let's see. With the dagger. Okay. And with a nat one, no. <laughs> uh, roll a d6. One, two, Camille. Three, four, yourself. Five, six, Daphne. What is it? One, two? One, two, three, four, five, six. Camille is hit with a dagger. How much damage halved did you do? Uh, oh, Our first gosh. nat one of the night, boys and girls. Yeah, yeah. Oh, man. I'm just like, sorry, Camille. Uh, six points of damage. <laughs> halved. Oh, half. So three. Three. Three damage to Camille, and that brings us to the six. Daphne, as you watch Zidar show his martial prowess and martial fallibility, uh, failure. <laughs> uh, it's clear that you need to kill this thing because it's going to do some damage. I guess oh. I go up to it. And try to attack it. I got a nat 20. Damage. Reroll damage. Add your modifiers. Nice. Wow, this is like really crazy to look at. Make it count. Uh, nine. Okay. Uh, Camille, after being sliced along the side from Zidar, it is. I'm your sorry. Turn. We have a healer. Possibly. That's right. Yeah. She can give you a touch. That's uh, you. My sinus is infected. I've had tea spilled on me. I'm stuck here. Now I've been cut. I'm casting Fog Cloud. Fuck you guys. <laughs> oh, gosh. I'll heal you. We can do that later. We're doing Fog Cloud right now. Fog Hello? Cloud goes up. <laughs> New round. Okay. Uh, everybody fights at disadvantage. <laughs> uh, a pair of eights from Chesty McSwoon as the vapors rise in cacophony. Uh, oh the giant boar. <laughs> uh, none of you are hit. Uh, you hear an oomph, but you aren't sure what's going on. Uh -oh. uh, Zadar, at disadvantage. Okay. Uh, let's see. Well, even at disadvantage, uh, the, the roll is 19. Very nice. The roll will miss. Ah. Okay. You want to try That's a second roll? Yeah, yeah. So I pull the dagger out again and make another swipe. Okay. Uh, oh, that's supposed to be a disadvantage. Uh, oh, son of a bitch. Oh, man. Again? A natural one. D6. If we do my plus set of seven, it, it would be an eight. <laughs> nope. D6. Oh, gosh. All right. <clears throat> Hopefully it's my... <laughs> How much damage do you do to Camille this time? Camille, I'm going to need you to roll a D10. No. Or I'm sorry. D20. My bad. D20. Three points of damage. Three. Uh, three, you lose concentration and the fog cloud lifts uh, as you, as it appears as though he's trying to make a tic-tac-toe board on your side. Uh, as the fog lifts, uh, Daphne, uh, you're up. You can see that the giant boar is headed right for the water line and has knocked a uh, woodsman over on the side. Uh, he's not dead. Uh, he just got winded. Uh, so it appears the giant boar is going to scamper off and will have to be chased by the two dipshits who let him go. And Camille is down six hit points. Yeah, I reach into my pouch and I pull one of the the the, the spare healing potions. Nope, it's just nope. like, please. It's too early. 
Oh. It's too early. Okay. I'll save it for later. We'll talk about this later. Okay. Do we want to kill the door? Do you want to kill the people that fell over? We just need to move on. You sure? Let, let's hold off on killing anybody here. <laughs> okay. How damaged does the person look that fell over? Yeah, two hit points. I'm attack him. Okay. <laughs> wow, she is really living up to that murder hobo thing. <laughs> 15 to hit? Oh, yeah, that hits him. What are you hitting him with? My scimitar. Oh, boy. Okay. Oh, wow. Damage? Yeah. I steal the stuff that's on him. Does he have anything of value? He's a woodsman. He has a shitty axe. <clears throat> Does he have a flannel shirt? Sure. I take the flannel shirt. Okay. You know there's people around, right? I'm so cool. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Camille Let's... and I are just like standing back. We're like pushing back. <laughs> Let's see if anybody spots me do this. A seven, a seven, an eight, and a five. That on nope. cloud comes in handy. That's right. Nobody spots Daphne murder somebody uh, in Cacophony. Uh, and I guess nope. a scimitar slash could be a tusk. Goring, I guess. Could, could be. Could be. Yeah. Uh, Goldie looks around and Yanni looks at Camille and goes, got red on you. You want me to whack you with a stick? <laughs> nah. Yeah, I didn't think so. <laughs> Goldie's like, oh no, uh, Mr. Brawny's dead. <laughs> I grab her, I grab Daphne and pull her to the side. It's just like, look, if we want to get back home, don't kill him. Is he else. really absorbent? Uh, he absorbed that hit and died. Mm. Yeah. Uh, right. right now he's non absorbent. His blood spills out on the grass. Okay. So, Stop, so, so Let's get deal, to the tower. Daphne. No killing unless someone tries to kill us, please. He's already down on the ground. You can see he couldn't breathe. I was doing him a solid favor. It was a mercy killing. He could have right? suffered. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I wink at her. I'm like, all right, we'll let it go. <laughs> Chesty McSwoon says, I'll see what I can do. And of course, Mortimer's like, okay, we just leave him here with her. <laughs> Fair I'm enough. Sure he'll have another conquest to tell us about goldie uh is confused at this entire situation and ponders where did the fog come from someone ate it's spring. garlic and onions and broccoli and all those healthy things that make you gassy that sounds more like a fart okay uh <laughs> She says, well, let's get you to the tower. Uh, so you guys trudge up the uh, angled hillside, which uh, Camille and Zadar are quite familiar with. Uh, and you pass two buildings, large buildings, that are under construction along a path. You would be familiar with one of these buildings as uh, the armed crab. Mm. Armed crab. <laughs> it is under construction. Nice. So, okay. Uh, the other one is the inn that you guys did not visit. Uh, as Goldie leads you up, Yanni is bringing up the rear, still pondering. I have never seen that much blood. <laughs> that was never. A lot of blood. Uh, you go through the area. Go ahead and give me an insight check, Zadar and Camille. Okay. Ah, insight's not too good but yeah i'm not i'm not very insightful on this i have six uh since my die just fell off the couch um 13. 13's good enough uh you notice that the path is kind of like that road that you were on a few days ago so you surmise as you're going up towards the tower, that this will be the future entrance to the walled city. Hmm. Uh, Goldie looks at you and goes, what are you talking about? Hmm. Don't mind us. That, that, that's a long conversation. Yeah. Yeah. 
Okay. Uh, as you continue the rise, you notice the only thing on the plateau is this tower. You also, all three of you, notice that the tower is still under construction. Uh, as you reach the tower, you climb. as you climb the grassy hillside that will someday be the southern gate, you notice that the tower construction is not fully complete at this time. The closer you get, the more you notice that workers are still building the top ramparts where they are currently installing a stone gargoyle on the corner. Uh, wow. <laughs> Uh, Yanni and Goldie begin Yo, to fight. Put rebar in that. <laughs> <laughs> it's not immune to teeth. Uh, <laughs> as you reach the tower, uh, neither of you, none of you have ever been this close to Uma Thurman's tower before. So you come up to a large wooden door. Uh, Yanni reaches out to knock, but his arm is pulled back by Goldie who says, senior person gets to knock. Rook. Rook. <laughs> <laughs> push it away. And she gives a solid rap, uh, to which an older elderly gentleman, even older than me, uh, answers the door in full plate armor that may have at one time fit him, but no longer does. Uh, the grizzled old man asks what they want. Are you looking for trouble? Uh, he looks at you three. Oh, we're not here to give it. We're just, we're just that, wondering. That armor. What, what, what? Lo looks like you're ready for war. I am Lord Tennyson's personal bodyguard. Oh. oh Who okay. might you be? Well, uh, we're from out of town, and... I We're gathered. here to re request an audience with Lord Tennyson. He's a very busy man. Uh, Daphne, throw your boobs up there. Zagar can too. Oh, both of you, throw your boobs up there. He, he unzips the, the cat suit a little bit. All, all three can... of you can just do chesty McSwoon on him. I'm sure. Does he, they don't are you me. sure he doesn't have time? Are you positive? Just seduction. He has no time. For How that. about you? You have some time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Be gone, foul people! Before I, <clears throat> before I shoo you away. <laughs> uh, fortunately, Goldie steps up and goes, "Look." These guys just want to talk to the Lord, Sir Globus. Just let them in. They, they're from the future. They know stuff. Lord Globus, and we're from the future? Oh, Lord. Sir, Sir Globus, Lord Tennyson. Got it. He thinks for a minute, fine, come in. Uh, you are allowed entry into a rather grand-looking hall. It's about 12 feet high. Uh, New construction is everywhere, uh, but near the back of the tower, uh, light comes streaming in through the windows. There is a chair that looks completely out of place. Uh, it looks like it should have been in a monastery of evil. It's got snake heads on it for some reason. Uh, sitting on the chair is a man with a cane next to him uh, and... He's got a bandage wrapped all the way around his head. What do you want? Is, okay? is this Air Call Justice Man? It is not Air Call Justice Man. <laughs> Lord Alfred Tennyson, it just sounds like oh. Air Call Justice Man. Oh. I got a toothache. Hmm. Oh, well, Daphne, you have healing. Maybe you could help him. I have healing. You could not heal the toothache. Does he what? need healing? I think he just needs a little bit of this white powder that we conveniently found in the little jar. Right. He uh, he is a bard. Uh, Sir Globus will introduce him as Lord Alfred Tennyson, bard of renown. Bard of renown. Uh, so he so, just needs us to say a song. <laughs> 
a kind of thing. I a toothache. I hurt. What do you want? Your teeth. No, I'm just kidding. They're just gonna skewer you. <laughs> leave, <laughs> leave you back in time. <laughs> what do you want to oh. do? I'm the tooth fairy. I leave it to Zadar. He has more charisma than I do. Oh Lord, please. <laughs> Uh, Lord so Tennyson. Far, I'm, I'm hurting. Please hurry. Okay. There is um, too much. Fall up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and, and I turned to Camille. I forgot why are we here? Why are we here? The flowers. The flowers, yes. Lord Tennyson, where are we from? We require a small amount of the sword lily. And we would like to perhaps purchase or barter uh, for a small amount of the sword lily. No. <laughs> <laughs> what if we could? What if we could remove that tooth, that painful tooth for you? You would feel better. I do, I do not know you. I am not going to let you just. Right around the nose. <laughs> well, Besides, okay. you are not Omarans. The flowers are to go to the Omarans. Not you. Right. Uh, I, I speak up. So, I have these wounds, obviously, the crisscross, blah, blah, blah. If our compatriot here can heal me, would you let her heal you in exchange for a small what? amount of the flower? I chime in and we can put on a show for you and sing. A show tune. A show tune. Do you like exactly. show tunes? Sure, Stewie and Brian. <laughs> <laughs> Look, sweetheart. This is a toothache. I am a bar of great renown and I could heal myself if I was injured. If I could speak better, I could heal you. A heal without cure is toothache. Okay. But a song from the heart, it will heal your tooth. Don't you hear it in the tune? All right, Mr. Bard, you're kind of talking in circular logic here. You're not going to be able to heal anybody with that mush mouth. That is why the Omarans are getting this tribute. I cannot cast any spells in this condition. So we have to acquiesce to the Omarans. So and part of the tribute is the Thor Lily. Well, that puts well, you kind of under their thumb, doesn't it? We're just attacking uh, you guys. Only until... Uh, I hold her back. <laughs> <laughs> Only until my tooth is healed. Once my tooth is healed, I will be able to use my fantastic magic and go ahead and deal with them because my leg is hurt and I can't fight. Jesus what if, Lord. What if I remove that tooth for you? Again, I do not know you. I'm not going to let you go rooting around in my mouth. But what and you hear you a have? sword clear its scabbard <laughs> as Sir Globus finally and, gets his weapon out. And I'm just like, stay your hand, Sir Globus. He, he's got a little palsy going. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll tell you what. How about you guys go deal with Theo Warrens and maybe, I don't know, they give you some of the flower or they just fucking kill you. Well, I mean, yeah. <laughs> I mean, we could do that. So, but I think we would have more success with the Omarans if we had you speaking on our behalf. Do I sound like I speak well? Again, I offered a solution. So, but I know, I know you don't trust us, but what if, what have you got to lose? More teeth. I mean, the if pain you, will stop. I mean, if, you if we fail, the Omarans will take it out on my people and then I will not have any people to look after and they will probably fucking kill me. I understand. 
So if you want to get the flowers, wait a couple of weeks or deal with the Omarans. A bell has sounded. Ding. Let me guess. It's new <laughs> arrivals. <laughs> the bell is coming from down below in the town and signals the arrival of the Omarans. I guess we don't have a choice at this point. So, okay, very well. We'll speak with the Omarans. Sir Globus, show them out. Sounds like Avery Brooks. <laughs> uh, which I know Caitlin doesn't know who that is. <laughs> I don't think Carrie knows who that one is. I don't think is. I know who that is. He, yeah, I'll show you a picture. Cradle robber. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> as Sir Globus escorts you to the door, he looks over his shoulder to make sure that he's not heard by Lord Tennyson. He then tells the party, if you're going to do what I think you're going to do, you probably shouldn't. But if I were you, I would go ahead and try and get their boat and hold it for ransom. Their boat? Mm -hmm. As you get outside and stand on the plateau, you notice down on the cove where the future docks of real cacophony are going to be, two Viking longships mm. with the sailors scurrying out towards town, rampaging and looting. Three of them kill the giant boar that is rampaging through the area. Uh, so these guys are clad in fur and look rather mean. Uh, however, it appears as though the majority of the sailors have gone around towards Old Town. Everybody give me an insight check, please. Okay. Again, we know how Zadar is with insight. <laughs> 17. God damn it. 10. Uh, Daphne and Camille, uh, you surmise the situation as thus. You can go back down the hillside into town, deal with these Viking-esque raiders, or you could take Sir Globus's idea, go down into the canyon, down to where the docks are going to be, get around behind them and steal their boats. So we know these are the Omarans. Oh yes. It's fairly clear. There's it's fairly clear. While you were gone, there was a bell ringing. So, okay. uh, and these guys are clad in fur. There's two Viking long ships. These guys are assholes. So they come here every year for this tribute. Mm -hmm. And they just, okay. They're Vikings. Yeah. That's what Vikings do. Yeah. I say we steal their ships. Yeah, I agree. Fuck these guys. Yeah. <laughs> Daphne? We can steal ships. Okay. So you want to go down the canyon, or you want to try and circumvent them through the town as you hide behind buildings? I mean, I'm more of the sneaky type, but... In between... Camille and Zadar... Yoni goes, yeah. so which one are we going to do? <laughs> steal a ship. Stealing a ship would be cool. You know how cool we'd be if we stole a ship? And you know what would it be even cooler? Gold, Goldie's hand, pull him back out. <laughs> and I was just like, you know what would be even cooler? We set one on fire. Yes! Oh, yes! Oh, yes! So cool. Um, With the dead body. It's Go Goldie says, uh, what can we do to help you? Oh. Now, Goldie is a late teenager. Uh, Yanni, younger than that. I say, Goldie, is there a way that we can get to those ships without being seen? The canyon. Okay. Uh, hang on, hang on a second. <laughs> How'd you do that? And a herd of goats comes charging up the canyon, followed by the dog. Well, nice. there, there's nobody in the canyon. Okay. 
Maybe we can use the goats for cover to work our way through the canyon. I do not want to risk my goats for this endeavor. <laughs> I don't want to risk the goats. The goats are cute. Yeah, they are. Do this. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> They're not <We're> goats. <laughs> Ooh, wait. <laughs> okay, I tell you what. I summon Omen. Foof. Raven. Okay. <laughs> and it's just like, okay, buddy, keep an eye out for us. Throw him up. Goes out, and I assume he's hovering over the ship. Mm -hmm. What's the range on the abilities? Uh, I think uh, for that, it's at least a half a mile or something. Oh, okay, that's that's going to be plenty. Uh, as uh, your familiar floats over the vessels, uh, you notice two things. There is a ship on the right, which would be south, that does not have anybody in it. Okay. There is a ship on the north. A more eloquent ship and it has a single person on it wow okay how fortuitous as he circles around you can see that there are eight to ten raiders in town ripping off and looting shit okay let's make our way to the ships now <laughs> okay head to the ships yes uh i am going to need uh, as you run down the canyon, carefully, but not mm -hmm. carefully enough, everybody roll uh, DC 13 versus acrobatics. Okay. Sadar's good at nat 20. 18 for Camille. Oh, no. Daphne, what you roll? I got a nat 1, but a plus 1, so it's a 2. No, it's oh, a nat, nat 1. one. <laughs> nat 1. Uh, as you zip down, uh, you didn't tell Goldie or Yanni anything, so they are going to saunter down as well. And they, <laughs> they watch as Daphne goes assholes and elbows down the incline. And Daphne, you will absorb six hit points of damage as you tumble, tuck, and roll up there is a large individual in front of you. He, a half orc, turns towards you and a stream of urine follows him as he is clearly peeing and his wang is hanging out. He looks down at you with a <laughs> creepy look. Oh, Lord. And pulls out his axe. <laughs> Everybody, roll initiative as Daphne's going to get beheaded. Eleven. Eleven. It goes to eleven. Uh, let's see. Sixteen. Sixteen for Zadar. And Camille's coming around the corner. Crap. Yes. Four. Uh, Zadar, you're up. Daphne appears to be danger prone, and it does not look good for her. She's in the danger zone. Okay, I'm going to... <laughs> I am going to fire my crossbow at, okay. at Mr. Orc. Okay. Not with that score. 14. Does the 14 hit him? Nope, he's in plate. <laughs> oh. This is Captain Rabid Dog. Oh, uh, Daphne, you and I tied. I was, uh, I was assuming it was a raider. <laughs> it is not. It is the captain of the other ship. Uh, Daphne, you and I tied. I'll let you go first. Well, he yeah, I'm going to attack him, obviously. Um, 19 to hit. Yep. He takes four damage. He gets two swipes at you with his great sword. But before that, a triangular metal object flies through the air. Yay! And goes into the drink. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, oh. it's, it's too far away, so you hear tink, 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 tink. Uh, Yanni gave it a shot. <laughs> Captain <laughs> Rabid Dog is up. So does Zadar. <laughs> 
Uh, four and a fifteen. Does the fifteen get you? Nope. Nope. Uh, he rings his great sword, not axe, as I had said earlier. Great sword off the uh, cement pond, as you will. Uh, and that brings us up to Camille. I cast Ray of Sickness. Very nice. At Daphne or? <laughs> that or. <laughs> Very good. Six. Not even close. Oh. New round. Uh, Zadar, you're up. Okay. Zadar is going to pull his, you know, signature funny face and cast Tasha's Hideous Laughter. So he has to do a whiz save. Whiz. <laughs> whiz. <laughs> As you do so, a rock clangs off his forehead. Uh, my wisdom save? Mm -hmm. 14. Nat 20. <laughs> what the hell is with it? Come Carrie, uh, you need to you you need to really make <laughs> pirate dog going? dice, folks. It it makes for an odd fish game, but they it sure does make me happy. Yeah, uh, they're too good, Carrie. <laughs> Daphne, you and I are up. He barks out uh, this round. Bring it, bitch! And you notice he's chomp or no, he is not chomping on the cigar. That's the next one. Never mind. Uh, <laughs> he is going to be uh, verbally and no, he does have the cigar. He does have a cigar. He's chomping on a cigar. Uh, bring it, bitch. Uh, he is going to be verbally insulting to all of you. So, Daphne, uh, you swing and then he'll swing. Okay, 23 to hit. Hits. Eight damage. Nicely done. I spit on him as it happens. Oh. And I say, wrong. I'm not a bitch. I'm the C word. <laughs> uh, apparently that does something to him because he has rolled a three and a two. Awesome. Zing through the air. Chink, 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 chink. <laughs> Throwing star number two. Wow. Is wow, Yanni. <laughs> and about. Uh, that brings us to Camille. Wow. Seven. New round! Is it R? Hey, you could have hit star. Could have been worse. Slash <laughs> oh, what I want to do is... Unfortunately, I can't do it as bonus action. Damn it. Okay. He gives a misogynistic comment towards you. Uh, rude and insensitive and not PC at all. So I'm Not PC at all. Not it's at just all. like, not cool. Not cool. <laughs> and... Uh, yeah, scimitar time. <laughs> so I'm going to take a swipe at him with uh, the scimitar and hopefully hit him. Oh, yes. 23. That hits him. Okay. That's going to hurt. Uh, that's going to be nine points of damage with that. Uh, bonus action attack with uh, the offhand is the Envenom Dagger. I'm going to try to find a weak spot in his armor. If I don't hit Camille. 25. Thank hits. you. Okay. Uh, with the Venom Dagger, uh, the initial hit is going to be uh, six points of damage. I'm going to Envenom the Dagger, and that's two more D6. Is that poison? It's poison. Uh... 10 points of uh, Envenom damage, and he's poisoned. You hear an amulet crack underneath his uh, armor, and he goes, Your bitch mother hits harder than that. <laughs> uh, Camille, you are up. A cracked amulet? <laughs> Parapet versus poison. 13. Oh, well, at least it's broken now. <laughs> 13 does not hit. Top of the order. Wait a minute. We were at top of the order. My yes. bad. Uh, Daphne, <laughs> you and I. Uh, Camille, you'll re-roll here in a minute. Take two to hit. Hits. And eight damage again. How's he looking? 
How much did he heal for with the prior pet? That restores like what? That just uh, keeps no. you from dying, right? That uh, this one just absorbs ten hit points. Oh. Okay. Boom! Zing! Ah, uh, you hear a throwing star go through the air just as Captain Rabid Dog uh, drops the hammer. I got a 14 on Daphne and a 17 on Zadar. Oh, my my AC is 17. So. Does the 14 get you, Daphne? Nope. Uh, 2d6 plus 2. You know what? Let's use some Murder Hobo Ink Dice. They always roll high. And they always roll high. Oh, God damn it. Damn it, Frank. Two murder hobos. <sighs> that is 12 plus 2. That's 14 hit points. As Zadar takes a beating just as a triangular piece of metal comes whizzing through the air and thunk embeds itself right between the eyes and with a great amount of gusto captain rabid dog falls backwards oh, his sword God. and falling dead see i told you i could hit him my god it took you I, I walk up to him and i push push that star even further in his head i'm like crunch <laughs> uh oh <laughs> let's see if yanni can pull that one out you can still pull that out. Yeah, uh, I figured as much. Yanni goes over and gets the other two. He now has three of them back again. Uh, and uh, Goldie points out, hey, my rock helped. It did. It did. It did, it did Goldie. So can we really lose this guy? A wing sure. cutter. Uh, he has uh, crude jewelry worth 100 gold pieces in several forms. You guys can split that up. He also has a small blue vial. Hmm. Is the the parapet or whatever is that still? It's cracked. It's cracked. So one use, it's gone. Okay. Ten hit points. Oh, poison gotcha. damage, and it's gone. Gotcha. <clears throat> so hundred gold pieces. Uh, you guys can divide that up amongst the five of you as you see fit, and mm -hmm. a small blue vial of fluid. I mean, I got a feeling I know what that is. So Probably I hand it to one. I hand it to Camille. <laughs> Camille, you want to drink it? I put it in my pocket for now. Oh, gutsy move. Let's see if it pays off, Cotton. <laughs> oh, no. Uh, as Yanni goes over and picks up his star, he goes, hey, over here. Uh, I take a look in his direction. And see. Goldie rushes ahead and gets in your way, and she also looks. So you've got the Hardy Boy twins up there looking around. Uh, from here, you are behind a few boulders uh, that mask your or conceal your appearance from the two ships. Uh, you notice that several of the raiders have returned to the dock. God damn it. And they have set down some goods and are headed back into Cacophony. Hmm. <clears throat> so is there, there is a the one person on the ship. You do not see anybody on the ship at this point in time. Either ship. Either ship. You have mm -hmm. the one ship directly in front of you, and then you have the other ship about twenty yards away. Okay. Um. How are we going to do this? We need to get both ships. Right, but I'm Johnny guessing. Johnny and Goldie break from you and run headlong towards the far ship. Mm -hmm. <sighs> They're quite nimble and agile, too. I'm sure they are. They're young. Sure, people. they're making. I'm sure they don't have to make acrobatics. <laughs> this the far ship. I guess we're heading to the far ship. So, but check out what they left first, because if they got that, then you know the tribute. Maybe we can. No, oh, that's true. You know, parcel some of that flowers? for ourselves. The flowers are not here currently. Ah, motherfucker. Uh. Uh, the dead boar is. What do I want with a dead boar right now? I don't know. You're a necromancer. You have dead shit. Not yet. Plus, <laughs> as you guys look over the uh, goods and services available, you hear, "Well, well, well, what do we have here?" As you turn and look. You see a large statuesque female 
uh, coming down the gangplank from oh, the ship. Oh, no. Oh, no. Uh, you notice on the side of the ship, it has the word, The Triumph, written on it. Mm. Uh, she has facial scars replete all over her uh, upper area. Uh, and she's also got some decorative tattoos. As she whips off her leather trench coat, it reveals a form-fitting suit of chain mail. She gives you a crooked smile. She then hefts her great axe and yells, Come on, yokels. Show me what you got. I flirt with her. And you're like, yes. damn! Okay, give me a performance check. I think all three of us at that point go, damn! She is a striking individual. Nineteen. What? <laughs> <clears throat> Anybody else going to flirt with her? I don't uh, have enough charisma to flirt with her. <laughs> Zadar will. Charisma. Uh, charisma. All right. So, um, yeah. Let's see how this goes. She's not going to like Zadar. <laughs> Seven. Well, she got a nat 20 against Daphne, and she looks at you three and goes, what do you three vaginas want? <laughs> I want your vagina. Smacks the <laughs> axe in her hand, and she goes, well, come on, pretty one. Come get it. I bite my lip. Like my <laughs> lip. She is going to chop your head off oh, and use no. it as a chamber pot. <laughs> <laughs> are, are you going to approach her? I stare at her and I'm like, but like, come here. you and me. Come here. And like, my tail can do things. <laughs> I put my arm around to uh, Daphne and I. Lower the yeah, the, double the cat charisma. suit Come even on, it's even freeway. even lower, and I just kind of wave from her hands. She's gonna have to do okay. We're only fans. She's gonna I'm have to, yeah. She's gonna have to do a wisdom save again. She actually has a pretty good wisdom. Oh no! Well, it's worth that, a shot. That's a seventeen. Oh shit! Okay. She goes. I am entranced by you. Funk. <laughs> <laughs> Odds it are, even Daphne. That's two. Daphne, your charming personality is no match for her pure hatred. For tieflings? Racist. Uh, 12 plus 6, 18. To hit me? It hit. Yep. Take four hit points of damage and give me a constitution save. Eleven. Ouch. Things are... Blurry? <laughs> I, can I use Hellish Rebuke against her? You can use Hellish you can, Rebuke. Yeah. Uh, you're still going to be... Fine. What the hell? Uh, it's like uh, you're in uh, Tommy Chong's basement. Oh, Lord, it was... Uh... <laughs> Damn it, she takes only six damage. She Better yeah. than zero. Mm -hmm. uh, everybody, initiative. Daphne, all of your rolls from here on out are at disadvantage. <laughs> oh, gosh. She... Oh, all that right. Sh that sucked. Eight. Uh, eight. Well, maybe Jinx. Paper, <laughs> scissors. Here we go. Ready? You want to do it? Oh, wait, wait, yes. wait. Ready? Oh, yeah, yeah. Rock, go. paper, scissors, shoot. Oh, well, I... Lizard? Yeah. yeah. She She's at disadvantage. Uh, <laughs> did you say 17, Camille? <laughs> You're up first. Uh, she throws the hand crossbow to one side the axe over and gives a guttural war cry. Die, bastards, you fucking pieces of shit! This is Captain Tourette, by the way. Tourette? <laughs> I'm attacking first? 
Oh. I'm surprised she's not up there doing the Amy Poehler thing. Ball liquor, ball liquor, ball. <laughs> not yet, she's not. Uh, Camille goes first, uh, followed by Captain Tourette's, followed by you two. All right, I'll try Ray of Sickness. Okay. Uh, 19. That hits. Uh, let's see. How do I do this? Uh, She's going to harf all over her boobs. <laughs> Wait, wasn't, it, wasn't it a disease, right? What? It wasn't a disease that you put on me, right? No. Okay. <laughs> Unfortunately, you got drugged. He roofied you. <laughs> I didn't want to say it, but Ten. this is murder hobo. So yeah, you got roofied. Ten damage. Uh, she is gonna get. Oh, she's gonna fuck you guys up. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. First attack will go against six <laughs> and four. Uh, she's gonna go after Daphne and Zadar first. This is gonna this is gonna get ugly fast. Oh lord. Uh fifteen Daphne. Doesn't hit. Okay. Uh Zadar fourteen plus six dirty twenty. And dirty twenty hits. D twelve plus four. God damn it. A two. So six damage. Ah. She is currently at Zadar and at Daphne. By the way, Zadar, uh, your bird is whoa, flying over, so you're getting a bird's eye view of yeah, uh, your her eyes. Her or something. <laughs> Maybe. Uh, Maybe. Daphne and Zadar, you're up. Okay. Uh, uh, as a reaction, I am going to. I'm making sure Daphne's not in the way, and I'm going to cast sleep. Last uh, <laughs> just that bird. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> okay, so that's 5d8, and you know how to work the pool, I guess. So Yes, uh, she's got a lot more than that. Oh, Lord. <laughs> but it's worth a shot, damn it. We got to see how, how, the, how the dice roll. You know what? I'm going to see. Okay, see. how much damage? What, damage? Uh, how many hit points? Yeah. Uh, what did I say? 5d8? Mm -hmm. Okay. Thanks to the dice roller. Uh, okay. 23. Nice. <laughs> Are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> uh, Daphne, you're up. <laughs> oh, shit. Yeah, a lot more than that. Yeah, I don't think I made. Yeah, yeah, no. Nah. This is your big bad guy, ladies and gentlemen. And the BBG, huh? Still. So, Daphne, at disadvantage. You're up. Eleven. <laughs> yeah, I figured. She's in chain mail. Yeah. Uh, Camille, you're up. Oh boy. You hit her last time for ten, did you not? Yes. Uh, she is starting to back away towards the gangplank. Oh well, fuck that. Hit her again! Hit her again! I will ask my compatriots advice. I could do Ray of Sickness, or I could do Fog Cloud. <laughs> Ray of Sickness. <laughs> okay, Ray of Sickness. Yeah, she'll fuck you up if you uh, Fog Cloud yeah. this. Maybe. No, I'm looking at it. <laughs> eh, ten. Uh, swing and a miss. Uh, she backs up. She's only going to get one attack as she is starting to retreat. Puzzled as to this magic stuff. Uh, clearly, these guys don't understand magic. Oh, first got to figure out who I'm hitting. Uh, five, Daphne. Uh, Eleven. I'm assuming that misses her. Yeah. She is backing up onto the gangplank, though, of her longboat. Can we set it on uh, fire? You could. Uh, maybe. Uh, oh. That is... We wanted to put a ship on fire. 
it, you need oil. We can uh, set that one on fire and ransom the other one. Zadar and Daphne, now that you mention it, the other ship has uh, lost its mooring line and is headed out to sea. <laughs> I turn to look real quick. Do I see two little familiar in individuals arguing with each other? Uh, <laughs> you see the single sail going up and down as they're yanking ropes, and the ship is going. You also hear a lot of screaming and yelling from the city of Cacophony. Uh, uh, oh, Zadar okay. and Daphne, you're up. Okay. Um, how far away is she from me? Uh, she's about 28 feet. Oh, she's 28 feet? Okay. I'm going to cast, uh, she's going to have to make a deck save, chill touch. Skeletal ghostly hand will come out and reach for her. That ain't going to do it. <laughs> so go ahead with your damage. Uh, okay. Let's see. All right. I, I rolled a 19 to hit, so it, this is a cantrip, so it's not much. So six, but it's necrotic. So and she's at disadvantage. Eight. Yep. So. So that that helps. Daphne, you're up. Ten. <laughs> so I still have disadvantage, right? Yep. Yep. Two, di then... two dice lowest. Uh, every, <laughs> everybody, roll perception for me, please. Okay. Do I have a disadvantage on that? Mm -hmm. Probably, yeah. Everything. Yeah, you're you're pretty much fucked since you got hit by the hand cross. Oh Jesus! Oh, Eleven. God. Uh, eight. Camille? Uh, 17. Roll high. Uh, Camille, at the start of your turn, you see out of the corner of your eye a rather large, brutey looking motherfucker running down the docks. You also hear a very loud twang. <laughs> Another natural 20. As Yanni has found the ballista on the boat nice and as you see the first mate running you see the spear chuck him because that's gonna do 3d6 and that's two murder hobos and a five the first mate is Dis indisposed at this point in time. <laughs> A little symbiosis happened. Just <laughs> you see him, <laughs> uh, and you see Goldie fiddling with the ropes. Still working the sails. <laughs> Still working the sails, trying to figure it out. Uh, Camille, she is backing up and appears to be dazed uh, from the chill touch. Uh, you're up. You're gonna have to follow her up the gangplank if you're gonna go into melee. How far away is she from me? Uh, she is closer to you, so probably about 26 feet. Mm. And you can use at least your movement to get closer. I go up and whack her with my quarterstaff. Okay. You're first one up the gangplank. Go ahead. <clears throat> Ooh, 20. Not 20? Yep. Damage, damage, and modifier. Mm. Pirate dog dice. For when you need those natural twenties. Uh, okay. <laughs> oh, crap, my eyes are going. I'm gonna have to go with my pirate dog dice because I am at disadvantage. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like Daphne. <laughs> <laughs> wah, wah, wah. Sad tuba music. <laughs> mm -hmm. You're still alive. Damage, damage, and what? Damage, damage, and modifier, uh, strength modifier, so I don't think you get one. Mm. I think you're an eight. Wait, I got that. Oh, God. High left. Yeah, I'm looking. <clears throat> yeah. I think it's just two D6s. Yeah. Go ahead. What's your total? Five. Total? Yes. <laughs> Wow, you suck. Uh, really? She, she's going to take both of her attacks on you, but she is at disadvantage. There's a three. Uh, there is a seven. Uh, does a 13 get you? Nope. Swing and a miss as she's 
fighting off the chill touch. Uh, Zadar, Daphne, uh, you did not see the first mate get hammer dropped. Uh, you do see that uh, Camille is climbing up the gangplank, so you are going to have to make a leap into the boat or... A leap of faith. Or not attack. <laughs> Um, Fortunately, the boat has a rope, so it's fairly close to the edge. Right. Uh, Zadar, she's gonna make a, uh, she's gonna pull a Legolas, <laughs> and uh, give me a dex check, and, and make the dash. Okay. Daphne, you will not be a disadvantage if you opt to jump into the boat. Jump in the boat. Give me a dex check. Uh. Ooh. Okay. 25. Legolas it is. All right. Daphne? 18. Daphne manages to get in there as well, doing the superhero nice. landing. Superhero landing. She so sticks it. Now you have formed a, <laughs> you formed a triangle, bitch, uh, mm -hmm. around her. Zadar, Daphne, uh, I'll give you a single action. Okay. Z Zadar is going to attack... Uh, uh, with Omen, does Omen give him advantage? Mm -mm. No? Okay. Alright. So, scimitar attack? Mm -hmm. Alright. 23. Hits. Okay. Now, uh, Daphne, you're still attacking at disadvantage. Uh, that, that swipe's gonna hit her for 10 points. Got it. Daphne? Beat a hit. Mm-hmm. At disadvantage. Nope. 15 to hit? Nope. Close. Uh, she actually has a weaker AC. She's at 16. Uh, Camille, top of the order. Eh, eight. Swing and a miss. Uh... Her first attack, and now is she still disadvantaged Zadar from the chill touch? Uh, let me see. Uh, I think it's for one round. Okay. Or... She'll go after Camille and Zadar this time. Daphne's yeah. going to get a pass. So just the one round, correct? Uh, I believe so. Let me let me verify that real quick. Uh, ba -ba -ba, hit a target. Disadvantage. Attack rolls against you to the end of my next turn. So that would have been last round. That would have been last round, yeah. So on Camille, 13 plus 6 is 19. Yeah. Zadar, 6 plus 6 is 12. Uh, 12 misses. Uh, Camille, you're going to take a D4 plus, D12 plus 4. Again, another 2. So 6 more hit points of damage on you. Uh, Zadar, Daphne, you are mm. on the boat. Uh, okay. The boat is shifting a great deal, but you may now attack. Daphne is. Uh, you know what, Daphne? Give me another con save. Let's see. Oh if no! I'm shaking it off. <laughs> Shake it off. Taylor Swift. Seventeen. Seventeen's good enough. You. Uh, uh, the fresh air uh, must be good for you. Uh, Clear it your head. <laughs> no more disadvantage for you. So you two are up. Okay. If that is, I got a nat twenty. Damage, damage, and modifier. Apparently, salt air is good for that shit. Yeah, apparently. <laughs> uh, it is 13 damage. Total? Total 13 damage, yeah. So you got 52 on her. Zadar. Okay, Zadar's going to attack again. Scimitar. Scimitar. So, okay. Uh, first strike, uh, damn it, 13. Misses. Misses. Uh, second swipe with the dagger. Um, 16? 16 hits. Okay. <laughs> uh, I already used the venom on the other guy, so. Wah, uh, wah. Six, six points of damage. 58. Top of the order, Camille. It's on you. Oh, Lord. I'm like, kill this bitch! <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, 
12. Not good enough. Uh, this time she is going to go after four Zadar and one uh, Camille. So Zadar, uh, nine plus six, 15. He misses. Eight plus six, uh, 14. For Daphne? Camille. Oh, Camille. Oh, no, it hits. oh shit. She is going to start doing big dick damage. Oh, damn. Uh, that's 12 hit points of damage to you. Are you down? No. It's close. You must be drinking that potion yeah. there. Yeah, I was about to say, <laughs> disengage. <laughs> hey, look, Captain Rabbit Dog. We don't take pee breaks here. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, you. Uh, Zadar, Daphne, you're up uh, after a brutal hit on Camille. Okay. Uh, Should I heal her? Yes! <laughs> you can if you want. She can from a distance, right? No, she has to lay hands. Oh, so lay hands. Uh, no healing word, huh? Word. No, just try to kill her. Okay. I got patience. Uh, Zadar, Zadar's going to make his attack when... It's you okay to go. Like healing. You you two are up to go. Well, okay. Zadar is gonna uh, make the scimitar attack. Okay. Uh, oh, God damn it! What is it with my scimitar? Thirteen. Uh, and a miss. Bonus action dagger. Not twenty. There you go. Nice. Damage damage modifier. Okay. Uh, let's see. How much damage? Um, okay. Uh, seven plus. Uh, sorry, math. Um, set eleven points of damage. Sixty-nine. Daphne, you're up. Yeah, she's still up. <laughs> I was about to say. She has a lot of hit points. Evidently. I want... Can I... I can put on my Divine Smite right at any moment. Oh, God, yeah. <laughs> that would have been useful. Yeah. yeah. I put that on. I got my Divine Smite. All right. That helps. Great. 21 to hit. Hits. Oh, that hits. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, someone want to roll a D8 for me? Because I don't know how to pull it up on the <laughs> TNZ. Three. So 10 damage. 79 hit points. Nicely done. Uh, everybody perception check. <clears throat> All right. 14. 17. The hell? Uh... Seventeen. Nice. All three of you here yelling and screaming as some of the sailors are returning. They are jumping into the water because this, as you may or may not know, is the narrow part. And they are wading out. <laughs> because during your combat, the rope has loosened and you guys are floating free. Oh. Uh, you have about six sailors headed your way. We are at the top of the order. Camille, what you want to do? I'll take my potion. Go ahead. Uh, 1d8 plus 2, no 1s. She can do that as bonus action, right? Correct. So she can still cast a spell. Uh, 5. You get 5 hit points back. Mm -hmm. If you want to cast a spell, go ahead. Okay. So. Uh, and if you kill her, you get Grim Harvest. I know. I'm so excited. Um, I'll do Shocking Grasp. Okay. Light her up. Because it is entirely possible you can kill her. No, not with a 10. Not with a 10 it is. Uh, 
everybody perception roll. Oh, okay. Uh, 12. Oh my god, five. Three. Uh, Camille, Daphne, you don't hear the raiders coming close. Zadar, you hear the raiders coming close, but that is all you hear. As she hefts her weapon, she's going to go after Daphne. However, as she swings her sword, there is a scream and a collision. Oh, she no. Will, <laughs> we got to see if we're standing on our feet. That's next. She'll see if she can hit a disadvantage. And that's a nat one. So she's going to lose her roll. I need everybody to give me a dex 12 check, please. Uh, Zadar rolls a 17. Six. Oh, God. One. What? Camille goes overboard. Daphne oh. hits the deck. Zadar maintains his balance. Uh, Captain Tourette's hits the deck as well. Zadar looks over. There is screaming and yelling as the other vessel has run over the Raiders and collided with the Triumph. <laughs> uh, got smashed, huh? Daphne, you don't get to attack this round. Zadar, you do. Okay. Am I Zadar, at advantage? you will be at advantage. Nice. You might want to kill her. 19. How much damage? Okay. Let's. Kill, kill, kill. Let's kill. do this. Uh, <laughs> is a big whopping eight on that first attack gonna gonna take it? Zadar lops her head off. Nice. Yay! Are there um, any of the raiders on the beach? Oh no, they were all waiting. They were. The they boat. were all wiped out. Okay. When you hear Yoni, you got him, and. Goldie is moving the sails. However, yeah. Camille is overboard and the Triumph is sinking. Oh, shit. Okay. Uh, Daphne, we gotta go. <laughs> <laughs> I jump overboard to get to Camille. And is there a raft? Sure. There's nothing we could float on? No. Sorry, Jack took the only table available off the Titanic. Yes, he did. Uh... <laughs> Who ha who's wearing armor? I mean, Zadar's is leather. Okay. What uh, what are you wearing, Daphne? Chainmail. That, that stuff after <laughs> she took off the one guy. That's right. Uh, you don't you're... have to jump. <laughs> Actually, she does, because remember the rope oh, it's got sinking. loose. Yeah. It's I sinking. Yep. Uh, <laughs> Daphne, go ahead and make the jump. Zadar and Camille, I assume you're headed towards shore? Mm -hmm. Yes. Daphne, make your roll. I, I look back if I make it to shore to see. A survival roll. Survival. Yeah. 18. You do it. Uh, fortunately for Daphne, as she leaps from the sinking ship, she manages to hit the angled edge, gains a footing, and can drag herself up to what will be the future dock of Cacophony. Uh, the ship sinks rapidly as the vessel, piloted by Goldie, with Yanni trying to figure out how to reload the ballista, continue to move on through the wreckage. Uh, in their wake, they leave six <laughs> bobbing <laughs> sailors as they have cut through the Omarans. Uh, as you guys splash your way towards uh, the dock area, uh, the citizens of Cacophony lead a handful more of the sailors uh, in tied up in ropes as the citizens have united themselves Yay! against the Omarans and taken the them hostage. Tyranny. Nice. Sir, uh, Sir Globus is assisting the Lord Tennyson down the steep incline. Oh, bully, bully, bully. Uh, 
you look over and you see I'm Goldie seeing. is finally getting the hang of it, and she's turning the other vessel back towards the shore. The, thing. the pile of goods and services now does include a bushel of the yellow flowers. Sure, it does. Nice. <laughs> Uh, a few minutes goes by. Lord Tennyson. Oh, you, you have done it. You are true heroes of cacophony. <laughs> I cannot thank you enough for your actions. You may take the lilies with our thanks. Uh, <laughs> a few of Yanni's friends uh, help guide the boat in. Everybody give me a perception check. Yeah. Gar. 19. Yeah, 8. <laughs> Only Camille spots the nameplate. What was it? Not 20. Oh, Camille and Daphne both spot the nameplate on the ship piloted by Goldie. It is the Canard. Ah, uh, <laughs> nice. Piloted by Goldie. The Golden uh, Canard. The Golden Canard. Uh, as Goldie and Yanni uh, leap onto the dock, they are congratulated by the citizens for their obvious victory in depleting the Omarans from the sky. Why do I get the heroes. impression Goldie is now going to be a sea captain? <laughs> uh, I'm not sure why you would say that because you never asked Goldie what her last name was. Oh. Goldie's last name is Penny Lane. Okay. Admiral Penny Lane. Admiral Penny Lane. Nice. Uh, Mortimer J. Sneed has arrived. His clothes are in a little bit disarray, and his shirt is inside out. Chesty McSwoon <laughs> is very happy and hands him the now he must mended... have a huge dick that's all i'm saying <laughs> my god come on he might have charm or no seduction, no. Or seduction uh, skills <laughs> uh mortimer is entranced by the entertainment uh, and is. you can tell he's gonna have a hickey right here yeah, <laughs> probably a burn mark from her anvil we aren't really sure uh he points out hey there's the flowers can we go yeah yes. we sure can yes looks like i missed some excitement he again did he did he extends out the uh magic wire before we go, I make sure I thank Goldie and Yanni and, you know, we as I pick up the bushel. And you're such a nice man for that. We couldn't have done it without you. You, you have saved us all. <laughs> That's not hammer for God's sakes. Yes. Uh, you are able to locate the single triangular stone okay. from the Neolithic age. Uh, yes. And Mortimer... Uh, hands out the wire and he goes we must go now my friends throws his arm around chesty mcswood dips her oh, but wait he's a halfling right no he's a human he's oh. a human he's just tiny mm. yes he's thin in nature okay. right uh apparently endowed with magnificent skills uh, right skills. uh while he pauses looking over her ample bosom he then gives her a peck on the cheek but cannot sustain her massive girth <laughs> props her on throws the wire to you guys and goes bye <laughs> Uh, you appear back on the docks. You're back on the stone. The clouds overhead. Everybody roll a d20. Let's see if a seagull shits on one of you. Fuck me. There it is. <laughs> 17. Daphne? <sighs> Zadar, I can assume there's a plopper on you. Yeah, and I'm just like, oh, son of a bitch. So, wow, you guys just left. <laughs> uh, there is Guildmaster Famunda D's Nuts, and mystified that you just left. 
Right. Well, yeah. I see. Funny, you got the funny flowers. how time works like that. Yes, yeah, we have we the got flowers. The flowers and. Um, Unfortunately, the guy <laughs> that can use them is for back in my time. part. You're gonna be. <laughs> you're gonna have to hang out with Mortimer J. Sneed for like a month. <laughs> As I understand it, Mortimer is going to go ahead and create the concoction, and I would enjoy uh, well, good. being able to watch. You two can so. just hang out together. Uh, Mortimer looks at Camille and goes, speaking of concoction. Uh-huh. Ah! Uh. I whack him in the nuts again. See if you hit him this time. Oh, please. Oh, please. See how this Nat 20? Yes! Nice. No more kids for more than yes. one scene. As he oh. crumples to the dock, gasping for breath, we bring this episode of Cacophony to an end. Oh my god, that was so perfect. Uh, oh, let's go. Know. Final thoughts. Uh, we ended with Camille last time. We'll start with Camille this time. Camille, final thoughts. Well, you know how I feel about time travel. Yep. Um, so it wasn't as bad as I thought it would be. You got to see history in the making. Yeah, I don't care about that. Um, <laughs> but I got to whack Mortimer in the nuts, so that made me happy. There's a plus. There's my thought. <laughs> David, final thought. David, final thought. Uh, whenever we bring Daphne, the carnage will follow. So <laughs> whether we want it or not. Um, no, I enjoyed the episode. It was great. It was great. And Caitlin, final thoughts. It was good. It's good to like play a game that like extended from before because I miss having like a continuous storyline. <laughs> well, you'll have to show back up next Thursday. Yeah. yeah no, I like. <laughs> Are you traveling like again? <laughs> <laughs> she loves killing people. <laughs> They, I thought the giant boar killed the person. Wasn't that the story we were going with? Or the raiders. It could have been a tusk. Or the raiders, that's true. It could have been tusk. It could have been Abba. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there you go. That 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 that's is reaching. Old. That that's is an old, really old joke right there. You know what? I don't that's... think David gets that. Tusk? T tusk? It was Fleetwood Mac. Fleetwood Mac. That's it why wasn't you Abba. It. Yeah, 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 it was Fleetwood, Fleetwood Mac. Mac. Fleetwood yeah. Mac at USC Trojan Stadium. There uh, <laughs> folks, I'm old. What can I say? Uh, follow us on Twitch. Follow us on Twitter. Take a look at our YouTube archive. If you want to buy our cool stuff, it's there. Uh, if you want to buy Pirate Dog Dice, you got to wait. The store's not completely open yet. If you want to buy some really cool adventure scents, oddfishgames.com. I actually picked up uh, some of those items uh, today, and we'll be sending them out when they arrive. Uh, if you want a seat on this game or on the talk show, let us know. We will get you in there. Reminder, uh, Adventures in Philbar Gen Con is full. Sorry about that. Hopefully we're broadcasting Oddfish Games. <laughs> there are two episodes are full. <laughs> They're trying to get a third one on Saturday. So GenCon.com uh, online. Uh, look for the Kitty RPG. Uh, and if you can get in, uh, get in. Those those folks are awesome. Uh, for all of us here at Murder Hobo Inc., thanks for joining us. We will see you Saturday for a one-shot, and if you want to play, we can probably get you in. Everybody, wave! Cough into your hand, <coughs> wash your hands, say goodbye, and let's get the frick out of here! La 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 Seduction of Mortimer J. Uh-huh. And hang on.